Dan Bush with Numac Precision Machines Company. Today we're going to do an impossible job that the customer wants me to do, and I am using uh, polygon tools to broach a 3/8 square, basically. Uh, the part that I have is not been machined on this end or anything, it's been soft up. And the other end looks like this, very thin. And I have to transform it to this. Square like that. Now, the customer, first of all, the brooch people will say that you need a 429 hole, which is 10% bigger than the brooch size. My customer says we cannot accept the part that is over 390, even though their tolerance on their print was 390 plus or minus 10. Uh, the brooch people also want you to have a lead-in chamfer. I can't have that either. Okay. Now what I'm doing is milling this with a 316 ball nose end mill, the 390 square. And I'm using a 385 growth size. Now, a little about the formation of the metal coming down. If I use a flat bottom uh, end mill, I would end up with a chip similar to this at the bottom where it would curl up and then kind of go down. And when you drill it out and clean it, it would be up a little bit. I've chosen to go with the ball because the chip will start going down when it sees that ball and hopefully we'll fill up that area and everybody will be happy. Now, the rotary broke is, is basically going like this. And each time it leans over, it's cutting that end. Now, getting the thing to follow and get in the path that I want to, I had to come up with a plan here. I've got a fixture with 18 parts on it. And uh, we'll start the machine and we'll see what I'm doing. I'm a stickler for the uh, meters. Uh, I'm running a 30% Z axis motor load on this tool. I want this spindle load to be absolutely at zero because uh, if I start seeing a spindle load, that means the bearings are going to pot in the, uh, the uh, rotary fixture. 